hi there. Coming at you from one of the most beautiful campsites I've ever stayed at in my life. Those are all yellow flowers behind me, y'all. Millions and millions of yellow flowers flowing for endless miles as far as the eye can see through the forest floor. In this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is why I chose to live in a car as opposed to a van, as opposed to an SUV, as opposed to a motorhome, as opposed to a trailer. I'm not really talking about why I chose a car instead of a house because I have an entire other video that you can check out about my philosophy related to why I choose a nomadic lifestyle in the link below. So first and foremost, I've always wanted to live a nomadic lifestyle, simple and nomadic, like something that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and take so much time and energy, something that doesn't like tie you down and require a 30 year mortgage or wow, it's really windy <laughs> or require staying in work that you don't particularly love that doesn't make your soul thrive. So I just love the portability of life, the simplicity of life. I far prefer time to money. Now money is certainly necessary in order to buy certain things in life that are needed to meet our simplest needs. So I'm not like anti-money, I'm not anti-society, nothing like that. However, I do like simplicity and I like dominion over my own life. I thought this journey was gonna start with either a van, a motorhome, or a travel trailer. I thought I would need to stand <laughs> and that's actually one of the cons of living in a car is you can't stand in it. However, by the time I realized that I was ready to just sort of jump in and dive in, I was researching travel trailers, motorhomes and vans and I just was like, I've got a car. A gift about doing this at the age of 38 instead of the age of 17 or even in my early 20s. At my age now, I'm far more reasonable, far more rational. I have a lot of life experience to be able to say some of the things I thought I might love. After I experienced them, I got it out of my system and didn't love it so much anymore. Like the experience of San Francisco. I thought my whole life I'd want to live in San Francisco. I moved there. I lived there. Loved it for three months. Couldn't wait to move. The only time in my life I ever ever broke a lease was in San Francisco because the novelty were off. So what I thought was my dream ended up being something, whoa, it's windy. <laughs> what I thought was my dream ended up being something that I changed up after I tried it. So, you know, you live, you learn. And I wanted to make sure that this experience that I knew I wanted to do forever wasn't going to be a situation like San Francisco where the novelty would wear off. I've been doing this for four months now. I'm in my fourth month and I absolutely love it. So I wanted to be careful with investing money into this. I didn't want to purchase a new motorhome. I didn't want to purchase a travel trailer or an SUV to tow it. I was considering a van because it seems like it would be more comfortable than a car and it probably would be. And I just thought, give it a try. Make sure this is the thing. So that's one of the reasons I chose my car. And then I thought, what the heck, this will be fun. A car is like a teardrop in your back seat. I mean, you can fit a twin size mattress, at least in my car. I got a sedan, I got a Nissan Sentra, four door. The unbelievable perfect fit of that twin size mattress, which is the most comfortable mattress in the world, was amazing. so blessed to go to Tiny Fest a few months before I did this. And that was almost like a spiritual experience for me. I saw how people transformed minivans, giant vans, horse trailers, cars. I saw the creative spirit within people and it just lit something up in my soul. And I was like, I could do that with my car. And I have to invest. I get to use every single thing that I have right now. That is why I was like, 
give the car a try. Before investing in this lifestyle, make sure you like the lifestyle. And then I also was like, there's some real perks to the car. One, you owe it free and clear, so you're gonna be able to save a lot of money to invest in the type of vehicle you may want in a long-term way if you really do like this lifestyle. If you don't, then you got a really nice chunk of savings because you're not making car payments, you're not making vehicle payments, you're not making house payments, your rent is yours. It was a fantastic financial decision. Also, let's see, I'm looking at my screen. I got like my list of things I wanna cover right here. Cars are easy to drive. Now, I have owned an SUV before, but I've mostly owned cars and I, they're easy. They're simple, they're quick. As a solo female traveler, they're a quick getaway. You need to jump in that vehicle quickly and just zoom off, boom. Really easy to do in a way that larger vehicles don't have that same luxury. Low gas mileage. I started doing this in 2022, in May of 2022. So what that meant was that was right when gas like spiked very, very high. My car gets 32 miles to a gallon on a highway and about 27 miles per gallon in the city. I have excellent low gas mileage. I love to travel all over with that wonderful gas mileage. It just is a deal. Plus there's a stealth factor. So even though the majority of my experience in my car is in the woods, or I picked up some pet sitting gigs where I am in people's houses, most of my experience is boondocking, really dispersed camping style, because that's what I like. I like to be in nature. However, if I do want to stay in a city, it's so much easier with a car than a van. You walk by a van, you're like, there's probably somebody living in there. Car is super stealth, super stealth. So easy to just go like park in one area, zoom out the next day, you know, don't overstay your welcome. Don't like make yourself look obvious. Then you can go stay in cities and it's really cool and it's really easy that way. So, also my car in particular, I didn't even know how amazing this would be. So I didn't choose my car for this, it just is an amazing perk. The way that I have my mattress and the way that the back window is. When you lay in the mattress at night, you can look out and watch the sky. I watch the Milky Way, I watch the moon rise, I watch the sunrise, I watch the sunset. Flagstaff is known as a dark sky city where the stars are unbelievable, so incredibly beautiful. So I can just lay in my car and watch the constellations just float right on by through the night. It's incredible. So I believe that really kind of sums up why I chose the car. It just made sense to start with. In terms of some of the challenges of a car, there are certainly challenges. Now, the car is small. The car is so incredibly small. You guys, it's so much smaller than I realized, especially because I chose to put the full twin size mattress. I could have made a smaller mattress that would have freed up a lot, like almost half the space in the back. But for me, a good night's sleep is absolutely vital. And I have the most comfortable twin size mattress. It's the most comfortable bed I've ever slept on in my entire life. And it fit in my car. So I'm like, okay, good night's sleep. I'm gonna work around this, even though it meant right, quite a bit of sacrifice. Because it's so small, I ended up purchasing a roof rack that could hold a cargo box and that holds my tent, my solar panel, a chair, a folding, two folding tables. Like, in fact, you see the, the little tray and then a larger folding table. It holds a couple of the bags that I have, like my gym bag. It holds a couple of my window covers. So the cargo box is a fantastic storage. Really, really useful. Also, I did take out my front passenger seat. That was key. I don't think I could have done this for more than like a couple months if I didn't take out my passenger seat. The amount of space that cleared up by creating a multi-tiered platform system where my passenger seat was is incredible. opened up so much space and the opportunity for order because before when like the way stuff wouldn't sit flat on the seat it would like fold it and that, that kind of thing just drives me crazy having cold food has been tricky but I believe I have a solution so again I didn't want to invest potentially eleven twelve hundred dollars into this whole venture until I knew it was something that I wanted long term I absolutely want to do this long term so I did just purchase my first car size portable fridge 
and I purchased a second power station to power that fridge. I don't have it yet. So it just came in yesterday. So I'm gonna go into town later today and check it out and see how it works. I may add an additional layer to my platform. The longer that you do this lifestyle, you constantly change and make adjustments that make ease of life all the better. Another con is in a car, I can't go off-roading as much as I'd like to. I'll tell you what, I love being on these old dirt roads. And if I lifted my car and got some massive tires, that would be so cool. I don't know if I'm gonna do that and invest in that because that'd probably be a few grand. Or if I'm just gonna put the few grand into an investment of something like an SUV. There's a woman on YouTube that I follow. Her videos are so cool. She has a Land Rover Defender. I think I'm calling it the right thing, but it can totally go off-roading. And then she made the back of that like a little home. An SUV would be amazing to do that. Vans, that's something I'm considering when I'm like, okay, if I upgrade to a van, I could probably do a little bit more off-roading than my car can, but I really like the overlanding. That's amazing. All of these are things that I'm considering as I save up for my next purchase because eventually I will upgrade. It's just a matter of what will I upgrade to because not being able to stand in your car is a little tricky. Like if you're in a windstorm, if you're in a rainstorm and you just want to stretch, you got to kind of lay down on your mattress to stretch and Sometimes I put a clip in my hair and that clip hits the top of the ceiling and I kind of get angry because then it pokes into my head. You know, I don't know. It doesn't have a place for a bathroom. So when you're in the woods, you got to get out at night and pee. I mean, that's what I do. Like, I usually have to go to the bathroom one or two times a night because I drink a lot of water. And so, I, you know, check it out and pull up my window shades, scope things out, make sure I'm safe. But then you've got to get outside. It might be hot. It might be cold. You've got to look out for animals. You've got to look out for creeper people. All of that's okay. You just look out for them. But, you know, it's kind of inconvenient. I got used to it, so it's not a big deal for me. When you're stealth camping, it's a little trickier. I'm still working that out four months into this. I actually just purchased an item that I believe will help me pee in my car. But then you want to make sure there's no drippage because, ew, what you don't want is your car to stink. I'll let you know in future videos how that ends up working, but I think I found the proper product for that. And by the way, I have to say, one thing I never thought I'd do was get up in a public forum and talk about bathroom habits. <laughs> it's just never something I thought would be part of my life. Like, uh, top questions. In fact, you can check out my frequently asked question video. Some of the top questions are, how do you pee and poop? So you know what? It's what people want to know and it makes sense you want to know it. Before I started doing this, I did tons of research as well. There's a lot of really helpful information out there. Other sort of challenges about having chosen the car. Now, I feel like this would be the case with any vehicle. As a solo female traveler, I do my best to not advertise the fact that I'm female. Now, if I'm outside at my campsite and people drive by and see me, they're going to see it's a woman there. But to the degree possible, I don't advertise the fact that there's a lot of femininity going on over here. I love feminine style. My homes, my decor is like, oh my gosh, it's like pastels and pink and frilly and like ruffly. And I just love that stuff. And I do got a little bit of that going on inside the car where it's not obvious, but I try to make the outside of the car look either more neutral or masculine just for safety purposes. For me, that's a con because I love interior design, but again, that would be the case with any vehicle where I'm trying to be as safe as possible. So, oh, shuffling. <laughs> because the car is so small. You guys, if you were thinking of doing this and you start with a car, any upgrade is gonna seem like absolute luxury of space. It was hard. I am a minimalist and I have been a minimalist my whole life. I have always felt like my home didn't have much until I was downsizing and I was like, I thought I didn't have much stuff. What the heck? Downsizing was still hard. And then I thought I was taking the bare minimum that was necessary in my car. And the first go of it meant I still had to get rid of almost 75% of what I thought would fit. And then I realized over time, you really don't need that extra stuff. If you are planning to do this and planning to stay in your car, recognize whatever you think you need and will bring, reduce it at least by 50 to 75% and find out how to live on that. The absolute basics you need. You need some hygiene items. So you need toiletries, toothbrush, you need water, you need food. I am figuring out a way to make sure I have cold refrigerated food because I do not like the ice chest. The ice melts in just a couple of days. 
sometimes not even two. I feel like afraid to eat some of the meat I bring if I don't eat it the very first day. I would just like to be able to have a refrigerator. Other essentials that you need, you need window screens, you need a way to have internet if you're working remotely, you need a power station, the ability to have a rechargeable capability off grid like a solar panel. There are absolute necessities that you need to take with you. You obviously need a place to sleep and you need your blankets and you need your sheets and you need a place to hold the items to clean it like laundry detergent. Unless you just buy that at the laundry mat, that's an option. But I carry a little thing of detergent around with me. I have a couple cleaning items. You need first aid kits. You need safety protective stuff, people. Make sure you have means to protect yourself. I think I covered almost everything. Definitely let me know if you have questions comment, subscribe. If you like these videos, I make lots of videos about how to do this. I also make videos about sort of the psychological aspect of this lifestyle. I make videos about the fun adventures I have. So definitely feel free to like and subscribe. Simultaneously, I make psychology based videos because I am a counselor, coach and consultant and psychology is my great love and passion. And that's my whole professional line of work. So in addition to this sort of nomadic living, I also make that other set of content. All right. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was informational and thank you so much for watching.